good afternoon to everybody and today lecture is the overview of the general class act 1897 that is the second year second semester topic and let us see the overview of uh, the general class act of the 1897 in this uh, online lecture let us see the introduction let us discuss in this class what would be the application of this act and how many chapters are in this act and how many sections, what section deals with what matters, are regarding what information. Instead of saying every time, the General Class Act, as it shortened in acronym as a TGCA in all our lecture. Let us see, what is the TGCA background? Number two, it is given objective and purpose of the Act. Number three, definition, section three to four A. General Rules of Construction, Section 5 to 13, Power and Functionaries, Section 14 to 19, Provision as to Orders, Rules, etc. made under the Enactment, Section 20 to 24, Miscellaneous, Section 25 to 30. Now we will see what is the background of TGCA and, uh, and its uh, introduction. Any act before commencement, there are there may be some acts which are not proper as there was a deficiency or gaps or loopholes etc. To cover the deficiency etc. a new act would be made by changing the old act or editing or adding or merging the old act and thus this TGC has uh, emerged in 1897 by passing by the respective enactment bodies concept of the competent authority that is the president in central published in the official gadget for the commencement of this act. Let us see some more how the Act should be made. What is the purpose of making the new act? For any, any act we made or passed, there should be some background to make a new act. For instance, you take dowry death are become more common in the society than the existence. The Indian criminal law were comprehensively amended to include the dowry as a punishable offense. Section 304B, capital B, was added to the Indian Penal Code 1860 IPC which made dowry death a specific offence punishable with a minimum sentence of imprisonment for seven years and a maximum imprisonment for life. Still such amendments to IPC which is not enough to control such a situation. Then to stop the dowry death, a new strong act passed, that is the Dowry Prohibition Act, enacted on May 1st, 1961, intended to prevent the giving or receiving a dowry. Under the Dowry Prohibition Act, where the word dowry includes property, goods, money given by either party to the marriage by the parents of the either party or by anyone else in connection with the marriage. Here, what I want to say is, sometimes the definition will be given in the Dowry Prohibition Act, the special act itself. When there no definition should be given, then naturally we rely on the General Clause Act that we will study in further. The Dowry Prohibition Act applies to persons for all religions in India, thus new acts would be emerged. Here what is dowry is mentioned in the act. If such a definition is not made, then we have to refer to the TGCA for a definition that which I already discussed earlier. As the society moves from past to present and present to future under the reign of the various government, as in India, it is the biggest democratic country in the world. The old acts are amended, merged, or repealed, and a new act would be in existence to make the pace with the existing situation. Context, those acts must be updated from time to time. In the same manner, by merging earlier old acts, the new DGC has merged or introduced. The impact on the old acts uh, pre-constitution, post-constitution, how this TGCA would be applicable to the old as well as the new acts or future acts are dealt in the background of the TGCA. Before the TGCA 1897, there are two acts. Now we will see exactly what is the TGCA, how it has emerged over there. Before the TGCA 1897, there are two acts, that is the General Class Act 1868 and 1887. That is also General Class Act of 1897. And this new combined together means General Class Act of 1868 and General Class Act of 1887 combined together the General Class Act of 1897 came into existence on 11th March 1897. We know the difference between a bill and act that we covered in our earlier videos. 
that is the first videos what is act and what is bill and what is uh, so what is uh, ordinance in short a bill is introduced in both the house of parliament and passed by the both the both of them and sent for the consent of the president after the signature of the president then it would be the notified in the official gazette then only the bill becomes an act and it would be also says uh, means notification also mention the date of commencement of the act or act implementation of the act and this is the process from bill which becomes to an act so tgc also published in the official gazette and then only it becomes an act and tgc very clearly mentioned in the provisions when an act will be commenced in the respective section in general if i want to say here after the passing of the both lok sabha and rajya sabha then uh, sent for the consent of the president even after that also it will not be commenced unless until it is published in the gazette but in some acts it is already mentioned when it will be commenced over there at that instance it will be commenced the date which is given in the act itself when the date is not given the act or when the date uh, when when um, even though the bill is passed by the president it will not be enforced but it will be enforced only when it is comes into the official gazette suppose the official gazette has come on a particular date from the date only it will be commenced yes that is the tgca will give you a clear explanation regarding the commencement by act in the respective sections now we will come back there is a company act for instance 2013 before there are also company act of 1956 and it is was replaced by the company act of 2013 but uh, time to time as the acts are updated or amended or replaced or replaced or repealed by the ma making a new acts to suit the occasion the next existence of tgc is 1897 is inapplicable to all central acts yes this tgc came into existence in 1897 then its applicability will be on acts which come which came into existence before pre independence or post independence in other words tgc having impact on pre constitution and post constitution act also whether this general clause act is known or called by any other act then definitely we may say it can be known as interpretation act also in some of the countries because there is a there is a close relationship between the interpretation statutes and general clause act both are not the same when you make the interpretation certain words then the original act will not define then tap the definition from the tgca interpretation of statutes is not like a tgca which passed by both the houses of parliament obtained the signature of the president of india and published in the official gazette but the interpretation of statutes is not having all those process but the interpretation of statutes is based on certain general principle or set of principles that we can say the um, primary principles of the interpretation and the secondary principles of the uh, interpretation we study them in a hand to hand to the same goal or purposes the purpose is to attain the correct interpretation or meaning of the words which are used in this act as we have seen the relation between the interpretation of statutes and the tgca but in many country tgca can also be known or called as interpretation act but in india we study them tgca is an act and interpretation of statute are a set of principles and based on set of primary principles secondary principle internal aids and external aids um currents of uh, language there is the language principles etc we will study in the interpretation of the statutes and when it comes to the matter of the tgca contain many definitions like the construction of rules or general principle of interpretation yes it is having how a rules will be constructed and general principle also given over there which are helpful in interpretation of the statutes whenever any act word meaning not defined in the act then we have to refer to the tgc tgca definition for example when you are reading a newspaper if any hard word come across in the newspaper then we refer to the dictionary sometimes we have with the hard word meaning also given in the bracket in the newspaper itself if not given we have to refer to the dictionary in the same way whenever the word is not defined in the act or statute then we have a relay or refer to tgca for word definition in the in other words tgca like a dictionary in telugu will say nigantu that means many words definitions are given in the tgca like a dictionary that is why it is called the general clause act which apply to all the central acts 
of course here he very specifically mentioned it is applied to only central acts rules and regulation but there will not be applicable to the state acts we will see in the application uh, this part later if any principle is not given in the act then we have referred to or relay on the general principle or construction of the rules in the provision or section of the dgca to sum up dgca contains the definitions and general principles of our construction or interpretation these two sets we may see in the tgca according to the come to the matter of the how the tgca can be used over there and is there any any section which will give the authority to the tgca to be used in the interpretation of the statutes are concerned yes according to article 367 of the constitution of india clearly says that we may rely or refer tgca whenever there is a interpretation of the constitution or any other central act of india every act is having a short title long title and when it is commenced and its application what is commencement and what is the and the that the definition we may tap from the section 3 of tgca now we will see what are the object and purpose of the act that is the tgca for every act to be made there should be some object and purpose in tgca there is our sections subsections clauses subclauses provisions in every act there are definitions in section that is especially section 2 where these definitions are applicable on which acts when applicable are studied under object and purpose of this act we have studied the law of contract transfer of property act even the gst acts like this whether tgca would be applicable on the future acts too this would be covered under the object and purpose of the act which we will study now exactly we see now the purpose of this act tgca is the law of the law i repeat tgca that is a the general clause act is the law of the law general clause uh, law or act is law for, of all central acts and regulation in india it is not applicable to the state acts there should be the state clause uh, act or uh, separate rules and regulations are made by respect to state governments all these state laws are general clause provisions or general clause act which is made by the state should be should be not above the general clause act of uh, 1897 it would be matched the tgc of 1897 it means the state clause or regulation should not be conflict with the general clause act of 1897 which is uh, made by the central government if any definition is not clear or is in the a then one has to tap the tgca definition in that place and uh, in your when you are study the transfer of property act where the immovable property uh, definition is not given then we relied on the general clause act, act of 1897 to tap the definition of the immovable property and we studied in that uh, uh, in the transfer of property act now we will see what is the other point in the tgca will be the tgca will be applicable to bring the uniformity when there is a conflict between the pre constitution and post constitutional statutes in other words later will prevail our former which is a general principle of law then the last point is all the definition of the words are put together in tgca to shorten the time now we will see the there are two purposes of tgca and uh, one is to shorten the language of the act and to make uniformity in the expressions or definitions for example when you want to use the word or write the current year in the act then in tgca it is written as year that means whatever the year or wherever the year comes in the statute it is written it should be read as current year the tgca one of the section says in the that is the section 3 says in tgca another example is y f y that is the financial year if financial is written in any act or it means year is written in any act f y it means it starts from april 1st and ends by 31st march in the next year it is clearly given in the tgca the meaning of f y so so what i want to say is one need not to write april to march in the act just writing fy or financial year is enough thus it shortens the language of the act that what i said earlier 
uniformity in the expression is created with the DGCA. For example, property case is going on either in the selling or purchasing the property, the two acts will be tapped. One is Transfer of Property Act and the Law of Contract. For registration, then Registration Act and Stamp Act also be attracted over there. But we may restrain only the two acts uh, time being. If the property is defined in two different acts in two different way, then we have to tap only General Class Act definition which is given in the Section 3. If there is no definition is given regarding the property in Law of Contract, then also TGCA definitions can be tapped and the same definition will be applied in Transfer of Property Act. Thus, uniformity of expression may be maintained. Whenever one word is used, but the meaning is different, which mean, which meaning could be used in such case? That meaning can be obtained, which will be near to the context. Thus, the TGCA would be helpful to resolve such conflict. For instance, the word issue. If it is used in the sentence like, they have, they have no issue, even though the marriage took place seven years ago. It means, issue means here, children or offspring. If the word is used like this sentence, there are two issues in that land dispute between the two brothers. Here issue means point of law. So near a meaning, so near meaning or relevant meaning should be taken as per the context. Depending upon the context, the meaning should be made. Of course, it is given in the language canon also. And uh, what we studied in uh, the secondary rules of uh, interpretation that is if I may not be mistaken the last uh, point yes come to again application of the TGCA there is no territorial jurisdiction to the TGCA that means there is no exceptional like Jammu and Kashmir on which act is relayed that act territory can be taken and if it is relayed on a particular central act the central act clearly says in which territory it will be extended and uh, this act TGC also extended to that territory only. It is uh, next point is it is applicable only to the central acts and regulation but not to the state acts. Yes, the application of TGCA we are reading here. The third point is if the central uh, if the central act uh, if the central act, if the central extend to the territory then TGC also extend to the territory. A different section applicability in different TGCA. See the section three applicable. All acts which are made after the 1897 and section 4 is applicable after 1868 and before 1897 is applicable. Of course, there is a section 4A also when the TGA shall be used over there. And uh, if no section applies to a particular case, then TGCA sections are applicable. Then the last point is for the application of the TGCA is concerned. Uh, it should be applicable only to the central acts as I earlier uh, discussed and uh, regulations only that is central acts and regulations only but state clauses act would be if it is made by state it should be in conformity with the TGCA if the acts are made then comes the th third point is the definition the definition section section 3 to section 4a in every act there are different definitions and those definitions take place under section 2 in general but in TGCA, these definitions are given under the Section 3. These definitions are given earlier so that whenever such words are used in the entire body of the other section, the same definition would be applicable in the entire act. Under this TGCA, there are um, at least when we can say there are 60 to 60 definitions are given um, in the TGCA. But uh, we will uh, have mostly used for our interpretation is 15 to 20 definitions are only like uh, act, preamble, regulations, etc. If you say immobile property, then we which will be immobile property. If you say mobile property, then what and which would be the immobile property? Mobile property, what is the definition of a person, etc. We will study under the section 3 of TGCA. Section 4 says about the Forbearing definition of previous enactments, that means how this TGCA would be applicable on acts before the constitution, the other acts which were already there before our independence or before TGCA introduced. This all we study under the section 4 and 4A. Then we will come to the fourth point is the general rules of construction and which runs from the section 5 to 13. These sections have the two parts. The first part says about the life of the enactment, that means Whatever the acts are regulations or enactments, 
what would be their life period which already in existence or which would be made in future or study under section 5 to 13. We already divided subheading into two parts. The first part deals with the section 5 to 8 about when the act has to come into existence or enforced or when it got the life and when it is repealed completely without any existence and what would be the impact of repealing enactments. The second part says about the construction of rules, rules of general construction. That means rules of time, date, age, number. Suppose if the gender is given he in the statute, it will be read as a, it will be included as a she also. Because wherever the masculine gender is used over there, there also feminine gender could be also be included over there. That, we, that is cleared by the section 3 under the TGC only. Again, from 5 to 13, and that uh, rules of time, date, age, number, etc. will be given. Let us see what section 5, 6 and 7 says. Section 5 says when the act was commenced. Section 6 says when it is repealed. What would be the effect of repeal enactment are dealt under? Under section 7. Construction of repealing enactment under section 8. Section 9 regarding the commencement and termination of time. Section 10 is the computation of time. Section 11 is the measurement of the distance. Section 12, due to be taken pro rata enactment. Section 13 regards uh, gender and number. So that was the uh, light example, light explanation regarding the section, uh, the above sections are concerned, which is 5 to 13. Now, now let us come to the power and functions, uh, which gives uh, clearly in the section 14 to 19. Section 14 says about the powers conferred to the accessible from time to time. Section 15 says power to appoint means power to appoint ex officio also. And section 16 about the power to appoint includes power to suspend or dismiss also. Section 17 spells substitution of functionaries and whatever the functionary is given, even the same functionaries would be uphold by the substituted person also, deputed person also. Section 18 deals about the successors, who will be the successor. Section 19 says about the official chief and subordinates. So these are the sections uh, under up to the 19 we dealt. Provisions are to orders, rules and made under the enactment of 19 to 24. The 19 says the official chiefs and subordinates and uh, its, a, it's a clarification is dealt. 20 construction of orders issued under the enactment. 21 power to issue to include power to add, amend, vary, rescind, notification, orders, rules or bylaws. 22. Making of the rules or bylaws issuing the orders between the passing and commencement of enactment. 23. Provision applicable to the marking of rules and bylaws after previous publication. 24. Continuation of the order etc. And uh, later the last part is miscellaneous section that is section 25 to 30. And section 25, recovery of fines. So, your fines are how it will be imposed over there, how it can be recovered. When your fine recovery would be there, there it is clearly mentioned uh, the under the section of the IPC should have been referred and uh, CRPC should be referred for collecting the fines and on which offenses the fines should be collected. It is clearly mentioned that in the CA. 26 provision to offenses punishable under two or more enactments. Here, what I want to say is, if one punishment, one act says one punishment, another statute will say the another punishment, then for the same cause of action, two punishments should not be there. At least one uh, statute should be followed, which would be the beneficial to the uh, uh, to the accused. Of course, we will see the beneficial um, statutes uh, in the further uh, lectures or uh, online classes. Now, come to the matter of the 27 is concerned, meaning uh, service by post and here, when you say whenever the a letter should be posted, then uh, that it should contain the proper address, including the PIN code, and uh, prepaid uh, stamps um, stamp should be there. And the last one is it should be registered post with acknowledgement due. If these three conditions would be there, then the uh, meaning of the service by post would be completed. So where it is given, it is given all this direction under the. Section 27 of the TG, TG, C, A, C, A. Yes. Come to the matter of the 28 is concerned citation of enactment. How the enactment will be cited over there. 29 saving for the previous enactments, rules and bylaws. 
and the last one is application of the act uh, to ordinance. So whenever the ordinance would be there, either it is before the independence ordinance uh, made under the Indian Council Acts uh, by the General Governor General after the um, President is made, uh, after the independence then when the President made, then the ordinance, how the ordinance would be applicable that we will study in this uh, uh, section that is section 31. So this is uh, uh, sum up uh, um, round up regarding the uh, overview of the general class act. Thank you very much for watching my TV. Goodbye.